You're listening to an archived Cabral Concept podcast. After listening to this show, check out the most up-to-date podcasts available at stephencabral.com slash podcasts or search directly on iTunes. And now, welcome to the Cabral Concept, where board-certified naturopath and integrative health practitioner, Dr. Stephen Cabral, shares how he was diagnosed at the age of 17 with a life-altering illness and given no hope for recovery. It was only after studying and traveling all over the world did he discover how to combine ancient Ayurvedic healing practices with state-of-the-art naturopathic and functional medicine to fully rebalance the body and re-energize it with life. It's time to discover how to get well, lose weight, and finally feel alive again. And now, here's your host, Dr. Stephen Cabral. Thank you for joining me here today on this Motivation and Mindset Monday. I hope you have some great plans for the week. I'm excited to be here with you today. Love these Motivation and Mindset Monday chats where we get to go over, I think, a lot of things that are holding people back in life that are stopping them from having the happiness that they want, right? So one of the main goals of life is, how can I be more happy? How can I be surrounded with more great friends? and family, doing the work that I want, having the spiritual-based practice that makes me feel fulfilled. But the problem is, I think we go about wanting these goals or going after these goals in the wrong way. And that's because simply this, that in the media and everything that we've been taught in life, we're always taught to add more. What more are you missing? Even if it is things like meditation or all these great practices that I am going to talk about in a moment, but it's always about more. Well, what happened to the principle that has been shared throughout the ages, meaning like for thousands of years now, we've heard from all of the different masters that have said this, that one of the ways to true enlightenment, one of the ways to raise your energy and vibration is not by adding more to your life, but actually by taking away. It's this principle or this law of addition through subtraction, meaning that you can get more out of your life if you're able to pull away from the day-to-day, the nuances, all the things that kind of drag you down. It's like adding a little bit of weight to a weighted vest every day that you're wearing. It's just one more thing, one more commitment, one more person, all these different things that begin to weigh heavily on our life. It's one of the main principles that I see in my work today, whether it's in my naturopathic practice, when I talk about Ayurveda, in the podcast, my book, The Rain Barrel Effect, talks heavily about this. It's this principle of filling up the rain barrel. And as it gets to be too much, too much of anything. So like too much from one part might make you very, very sick. Too much stress, lack of sleep, poor eating, lack of exercise, lack of rest, lack of all of these things, or too much of those things, right? All fill up our rain barrel. And what happens then? Well, then we see the outward appearance of what we call dis-ease in our society. But the same thing can happen with spirituality, same thing with poor relationships. It's just like, okay, one thing adds up on top of the other. It's, it's what they call the snowball effect, right? Well, it's the same thing. Things begin to fill up and they become so big that we can no longer deal with them. And it took me quite a long time to realize this in my own life. Even after I studied like literally book after book after book, I'm like, okay, I get it. I get it in principle. I get it on paper, but I haven't begun to see these, the, these things transpire in my, whole, in my own life. Meaning that even though I read it, even though I hear the words, why can't I put these things into practice in my own life? And that's because there was so much holding me back. I always was trying to do more. Like, hey, what more can I do to fix this situation instead of what can I do less of? And that's what I want to chat with you about today. That's what I believe is so powerful. And I told you that I would get back to meditation. Now, meditation is one of those things that you can add to your life that is actually a subtractive practice. And that's why it works so well. So when you look at the research, and again, this is not going to be a whole podcast on meditation, but it's one principle behind it. When you practice meditation, you actually can see that a lot of the pro-hormones in your body, such as dihydroepiandosterone or DHEA, one of the anti-aging-based hormones actually starts to increase. And it took scientific researchers forever to figure this out. But in Ayurveda and all the Eastern practices, they always knew. Right? In naturopathy, we've always known why it works so well, meditation, to increase DHEA because it lowers cortisol. And DHEA is like the other side of the coin. So what happens is if you're producing less cortisol because you're not as stressed out about everything, right? Because you're trying to relax. And as you're trying to relax, well, cortisol can go down. And then the body can say, okay, let's shift more now 
to that anabolic rejuvenating pathway, which is DHEA leads the charge there. So we can see how that meditation, by actually ridding your mind of thoughts and all of the different clutter in there, actually begins to allow you to see more clearly and think more clearly. And that's the amazing thing about it, is that by doing less, by sitting down, by focusing on your breath, by trying to clear your mind, you actually see more. And you can, in the future, do more because you know very clearly what you should be doing. So that's just one path. But what I want to share with you today are really going over the different ways to raise your energy and vibration by eliminating five things in your life. And I'm going to be giving you my five, my five of how I was able to take my life to that next level. Now, is it still a work in progress? Of course, right? I think we're all a work in progress. I'm certainly a a very good case of that. But what I want to say is this, I want you to be able to figure out what those five things are in the first place. So what I like to do is just always be asking myself, not from a judgmental standpoint, but I always ask myself, what's holding me back right now from getting to that next level, right? Because even if you're at a level that you enjoy, I'm absolutely at a level that I enjoy right now. I'm at a place in my life where I'm quite happy, quite content, but it does not mean that I can't strive for more. And I also know just five years ago, 10 years ago, 15 years ago of the place I was in at those specific times. And I had a lot to work on at all of those specific times, even five years ago. I think five years ago was a huge turning point between the five and seven year mark for me. It's when I really felt like I started to come into my own. I'm going to share with that with you in just a moment. But what I'm saying is right now, I'm always taking kind of like an ongoing little count, not judging myself, not saying this is good or bad. I'm saying what is it right now? What's in my life right now that I may be able to get rid of? I may be able to move to the side so that I can have more freedom. I can have more energy. I can have more zest for life. And for you, it might be saying and asking yourself, just saying, am I in a negative relationship, right? And can it be fixed? We'll talk about that. Am I in a bad work environment? Am I in the wrong career path? Like just because you went to college for something, doesn't mean you should do it for the rest of your life. A lot of people are in that that conundrum of like, I spent all this time, I spent all this money, I became an investment banker, I became an attorney, I became any one of these number of things accounted, right? I'm just trying to think of all the people in my practice that I hear from. They're like, I want to be doing more of this. And I said, okay, well, why don't you? And there's always that something holding them back. We're going to talk about that because it plays into what I, why I was able to, I believe, break free as well. Another big thing is this is, Are you living in a body that's overweight? Because I'm telling you right now that overweight body, forget about vanity. Again, I always say throw vanity out the window. Let's talk about it. Is that the body that can best serve you to carry you through life? Or is it holding you back? Is it holding you back from meeting people? Is it holding you back from wanting to do more, exercise more because you're in pain, right? You know, it's not just about being overweight for a lot of people. It's being unwell, Are you in a body right now that's suffering from some type of autoimmune-based issue? Are you inflamed? Do your joints hurt? Do you get migraines? Do you have skin rash? Do you have psoriasis? What's going on with your body that if you were to fix that, you know, if you were to subtract that unwell from your life, if you were to subtract being overweight from your life, if you were to remove the negative relationships or the poor career path or the bad work environment, the toxic work environment, right? If you're able to remove those from your life, would you be more happy? would things begin to get better, right? Because you'll have the opposite of that, hopefully, at that time. And I always want to ask too, is like, what is it too that's holding you back from doing any one of those things? And again, there are so many more. I'm just giving you a couple of examples that I see quite a bit in my practice. And I always say is, you know, what's holding you back, but also what's causing the negative thoughts that you're harboring, right? Why do you feel so hurt? What are those things that you have attachments to that are negative attachments that are not serving you right now, but you keep doing them day in and day out? What I want you to do is I want you to open your mind. I don't want you to pass judgment yourself. Too many people are so unfair. They're so harsh with themselves, but they have to remember, you have to live with you. And you're a good person. Genuinely, deep down, you are a good person who's trying to figure things out, but you're in a tough spot and we've all been there. So be fair to yourself. Be kind to yourself. You're doing the best that you can with what you have right now to work with, right? So you're not in the position yet to be where you want to be to act how you want to act. So what I say right now is be kind, be gentle. You're working this out. And 
In my book, The Rain Barrel Effect, I go into as part of the de-stress protocol, the nine toxic emotions. I want you to listen to this list. And I want you just to take a mental note, especially if you're driving right now, if you're walking right now, which a lot of people like to do as they listen to podcasts, and I, I do it myself, is I like to take these mental notes. And I ask myself, and again, this is the nine toxic emotions. And I, I did a seminar on this not too long ago. And it was pretty powerful, meaning like for all of us, we had to start to think about all these different thoughts that we might feel come up on a daily basis. And I just want to see if any of these come up for you. Do you feel bitterness at any point in your life on a daily or weekly basis? Any bitterness that shows up? What about anger? Do you feel any anger in your life? Anger towards anyone, anger towards work, anger towards spirituality or religion, anything like that. Do you feel any anger? What about resentment? Is there anything you resent doing or not doing or towards a person or anything like that? Any resentment? Any envy? Do you envy anyone else, any career, any relationship? Do you have an envy? What about discomfort? Where are you feeling discomfort in your life? And of course, you can pause this at any time and write these things down if you are journaling. What about anxiety? What makes you anxious in life? That's such a great and powerful question. What makes you anxious? Because if you can get to the answer of that, which we will be talking about next, you will have really opened up your eyes to seeing how you can overcome it and become truly happy. What about sadness? Anything in your life that makes you sad? How about shame? Shame's a big one. This is one that not a lot of people like to admit. Do you feel shame anywhere in your life towards what you should have been? Someone thought you should have done this or, or what you were supposed to grow up to be, right? Any one of those things. Is there any shame there? What about guilt? Guilt and shame are very closely related, and that's why I listed them there together. Anything you feel guilty over? Guilty over from the past, guilty over you're currently going through right now. Any guilt, what is it? Because what I'm looking for you to do is to find out what that emotion is. What's the emotion that you're holding onto, that you're harboring right now, that feeling that you can't let go of? And if you're able to truly say, I feel the shame, I feel guilt, and here's when I feel it, here's why I feel it, And you're able to then put that into a concrete reason, such as a relationship. I don't have a good relationship with my parents because I feel guilty that I didn't become the son or daughter or whatever that they wanted me to be. I didn't become this in my career. That's a very common one as well. Or with a spouse, I don't make enough money. I'm not able to provide this. Or I'm not the best parent that I should be for my children. Whatever it is, if you're able to figure out what that concrete example is, because a lot of times people feel it, they get upset, but they don't know why they're even feeling that emotion. But if you're able to figure out why, what you can then do is you can begin then to do a little bit of a course correction. One is that you truly may be doing a great job. You might be being too hard on yourself. Or two, you might not have all the tools that you need to work with to make you great at what you want to become, meaning like the best parent that you could be, whatever it might be. There are many, many different reasons. But at the same time, you simply might be holding on to something that is not serving you, a thought that is not truly allowing you to be you. And that's what I want to talk about. That's what I want to get into because I held a lot of these thoughts myself. And if you're constantly holding on to what I call other people's thoughts about you and what other people think that you should be, or what you feel you should be for other people, you never get to be you. So it's a constant tug of war in your body, right? Because you have you, the person who you feel at the deepest core level are, right? It's a person that might love music and art and drawing, all these different things, right? Those different creative outlets, but yet you're stuck in a position, a job, or a setting that doesn't allow for that person to come through. Now, maybe you still need to be doing that job or career, but you need that one hour or two hours or so per day to get into your craft. Or maybe it's just a half a day on the weekend, or maybe it's one day off a week. We don't know. But what we need is to figure out how deep a core belief that is for you and to get that energy and those juices flowing, right? We need to figure that out. What I'm saying is this, is that we need to figure out, we need to figure out what negative emotions you're holding on to because that lowers your vibration and it lowers your energy. If you are constantly stressed and being worn down about anger or envy or resentment or shame or guilt or bitterness or any one of those emotions, and anxiety is a big one that people walk around with this low-level anxiety every single day. 
If you're doing that, I can almost guarantee you, almost guarantee you, you will not be vibrating at a higher level. And all I mean by that, again, we don't have to get into quantum physics or anything like that right now. What I'm talking about is a vibrational level that your energy feels lifted. You literally feel lighter, so light that you have the energy to want to exercise, the energy to want to eat well, the energy to feel like, I don't even really want to go to bed tonight, but I know that I have to to follow my healthy plan, right? And you wake up the next morning excited to get out of bed. And if you don't feel that way right now, well, then there's a blockage. There's probably not just one blockage, but many. And that's what I want to go over now because we need to figure out, let's say the first three to five, because you can't work on all of them at the same time, but you can start to get a running list. And I'm telling you right now, as you begin to work on one you'll begin to see the next to work on. That's always how it goes, right? And as you begin to get better and better, you'll see other things and other opportunities to make you better and better. So let's start with the list. Let's start with the list of five. I want to share with you my five, ultimately that between five or seven years ago or so, I was able to work through. And it took, didn't take just days. It didn't take weeks. It probably took months. Months, and then those months compounded on top of more months where I got better, but then the more months that passed, the more weeks that passed, the more experience, right? Just the more hours I put in to being a better person for me so that I could be a better person for the world, I got better and better. And that's how it is. And that's truly why, again, I say, why do I feel like I have more energy every year? Why do I feel healthier than I did last year, right? The reason is it's because of compounding interest, right? We're putting in the work, We're putting in the work each and every day, each and every week, each and every month. Those months add up to years. And you begin to vibrate at a higher level. There are always going to be low points. Don't focus on the low points. I have bad days. I have bad days as well. We all will. Things happen in life that are sometimes out of our control. But we don't need to dwell on those negative parts. We need to focus instead our attention on what we do have in our life and what we want more of. So I'm going to give you the opposite and what I was able to do with it with my big five. I'm just giving you my five from what I was able to do not too long ago. The first one was a big one. It was a really big one for me. And I find this to be a huge part of most people's being stuck in life, that just being feel like they're being held back. And that was other people's thoughts of me. I was always worried about what other people were thinking about me. It's funny because I've read this, I can't even tell you, right? When I go back to the beginning of the show, what I spoke about is that throughout the years, the masters have always said certain things and you can read it, but you don't fully implement it until you are ready or you've done enough of the work yourself. So all the masters said like, listen, people are not thinking about you nearly as much as you think they're thinking about you. Maybe like a fraction of the time or probably not at all. Because we tend to think ourselves, like as ourselves, is so important or everything we're doing is being scrutinized and watched. And for the most part, it's not. And that was actually very liberating. It was a little humbling, but it was also very liberating at the same time. It's like, hey, listen, it was more like everybody has so much going on in their life. Think about your life, how much you have going on. Do you really have that much time to scrutinize about all these other people like that you might come in contact with and what they're doing in the life? Probably not. So don't be as hard on yourself. So I started to let go other people's thoughts of me, what I thought that they were thinking about me, which ultimately led to me opening up this very large wellness center and then being able to to move into a smaller private practice not too long ago, being able to do my podcast, being able to do videos. The video started over a decade ago. And I had to say like, listen, I'm going to get critiqued. Someone's not going to like the way I look. Someone's not going to like the way I speak. Someone's going to think that I'm too big. Someone's going to think that I'm too small. Like, it's just that's the way it is. Listen, like, that is part of life and judgment will always be there. So, what I had to say to myself is Did I feel I did the best of my ability? Did I feel like I did a good job at that particular point in my life? So, I can look back at videos I did over 10 years ago. I'm like, Oh, well, I'm like, you know, like I would have done this, this, and this, maybe a little bit different, but I'm not upset at all. That is the best. I put out my best work at that time. Not my best work today, not my best work in 2018, my best work back in 2008. And that's why like, I can look now and I can say, this is all a journey. This is about having gratitude and perspective. Those are my two favorite words. They really are. Every time I'm off course, I course correct by doing this. I talk about gratitude and I talk about perspective in my life. Gratitude for how far I've come 
meaning like from so many different levels. I don't think that people really realize that is that the work that I've had to put into my life is monumental. I mean, it really is. And I say that from a very humble standpoint. I came from pretty, pretty humble background in terms of my my mental outlook, how sick I was. And I was just in a bad, bad spot. And through whatever type of opportunity I was given, through meeting the right people, through being stubborn enough to not listen to my doctors, to just keep pushing through time after time is like, that is gratitude. Like that to me is, I'm grateful that I was even given the thought to say like, hey, read this book or meet this person or go see another doctor, even though you've failed at least a dozen times, like go, go keep pushing. And the perspective was looking back saying like, well, that's how I grew up. This is where I was at at 18. Here's where I was at 25 when it started to get really better. And then at 30, where I kind of like saw the light and I keep moving forward each and every year. So that's the perspective. And then I also look at, I'm getting better, but I know that I'll be even better five years from now. And that's why I get excited for that. And that begins to raise my energy, which raises my vibration, right? Because they're one and the same, our energy and vibration are what we are, right? That's what it's all about. So the second thing I want to talk to you about is negative work environment, negative clients. I used to believe way back, way back, doing a a minimum of 40 sessions a week as a personal trainer. And I worked with a lot of negative clients that just brought so much negativity into my being because... I'm one of those people. I don't want to get into it as much right now, but I I feel, I can feel how people are feeling. I can feel it through Skype. I can feel it in person. I can feel it when I'm talking with a group of people, a crowd, whatever it is. I can empathize with it, but it takes so much of my emotion and those negative people that brought the negativity onto me. And I just felt that way back then as a a personal trainer and then a nutritionist and strength coach and, and then as a functional medicine doctor, naturopathic doctor, that I, it was my duty, it was my obligation, it was my ethical need to work with any person that wanted to work with me. And I had to stop that. I had to stop that about, I would say, five years ago as well, five, six years ago when things started to really change for me. And the reason was this, is that after I worked with those negative people, I was worse for everyone in my office, I was worse for everyone on my team, and I was worse for all of the additional people that I worked with. And I said that that one person They may need my help, but here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to have them work with someone who's probably a little bit better at working with a person like that than I am because I know my limitations. And again, I want to help everyone. And if someone's suffering and they're telling me about all their suffering, that's not negativity. That's not complaining. They're just telling me the truth. But people like, I don't want to do this. I don't want to follow this. How can you help me without me doing this, 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 and this is like, I can help you get well, but you have to help yourself. Like You have to want to help yourself. And that's so challenging for me because I can see it in there. I know I know that I can help this person get well. I know I can help them lose weight for sure. I can see what needs to be done. And they're telling me, no, 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 no. I just don't want to. And again, like it all takes work. You can't come to me or another naturopath or health practitioner, whatever it might be, and expect that there's going to be a magic pill. There is no magic pill. And so I had to, I create an application. That application allows me to see who's going to be a better fit or not for me. And then I can also then refer out and I can always read someone's lab and I can always help them from many different perspectives, but it might not be with me one-on-one. The third one I want to share with you is email. I know I've joked about this in the past, but email was getting so bad. And I'm talking over 300 emails a day. It was taking hours per day of email. And it's a thing that I least like doing. You know why? Because it's not teaching. I realized many years ago, this is many years ago, a decade or plus ago, that I'm always happy if I'm teaching. That's it. If I'm doing my podcast, I'm teaching. If I'm working one-on-one with a private wellness concierge client, I'm teaching. If we're working with my team, I'm teaching my team. If I'm writing an article, I'm teaching. If I'm doing a video, I'm teaching. If I'm teaching, I'm happy. During email, all I'm dealing with is back and forth, back and forth about, I have to fix this, this has to be fixed, whatever it might be. One email just leads to the next email. I could not do it anymore. I honestly could not do it. So now I have a great team who does not have the same strange and weird quirks that I do that's able to answer all of those different emails and they do a better job at it than I. That's the truth because we have to understand our strengths. My strengths are only in teaching. That's it. I don't have strengths. I'm not great at customer service. I'm not great. I know what needs to be done, meaning like, 
I want the very best customer service for everyone that purchases a lab test or anyone that does a coaching session, anything, the highest level. My team will tell you that it is the highest level. It's so high that it can be hard for us to achieve that. But what I'm saying is I'm not good at the back and forth uh, emails for customer service, those types of things. That's why I have much better people with more patience than I do. And that's the truth to do those types of things. So doing that was huge for my life. That began to give me then my energy back because I just used to dread sitting down to saying, okay, now I have a couple hours of emails to return before I get to go home. And it was, and it was just going late into the night. And it was brutal. <laughs> All right. Number four is this. In relationships for many, many years, no matter what, whether it was with friends, with family, with you know my, my now wife, is always feeling that I need to prove a point to show I was right or to win an argument. And since that was always a strong suit, being able to debate and all those specific types of things, and I enjoyed it, I didn't realize that how detrimental and how negative that is to other people. Like, and that I really wasn't being a good person. I wasn't even being the type of person that I wanted to be. And I realized that at most points, at most junctions, when people get into an argument, they're both right on some level and both wrong on some level. And because most people just don't go into an argument blatantly wrong. I mean, if they do, then that's, that is a sociopathic, a very strange nature. That's not most people you come into contact with. So if you have a disagreement with someone, they have a case to make, at least in their mind. And that's worth hearing out because most arguments, most debates are subjective. We're not talking about something that can just be proven either way, right? I mean, if we could, we would simply just look it up or we'd look out the window and prove it, right? So like very simple. So what I had to say is whether I think I'm right or wrong, but mostly right, right? It doesn't make a difference. I need to let that go. At some point, I have to say this, and this is what I do say now, like, hey, you felt you were right. I felt I was right. Most likely, we both have a point here here's what I was trying to get at. And I always try to say that. I always try to say that like, this is what I meant by that. Can you see where I was coming from? And if I can get them to say, at least I see where you're coming from, then good. Like, Then I can say, all right, now, where were you coming from? And if we can do that, then we can begin to listen to each other and understand that nothing, most likely it was not malicious. It became maybe malicious because we were both pushing back so hard. So what I try to do now is I try to cut that off before it gets there. Like, hey, Here's where I'm coming from right now. Like, what are you thinking? And to diffuse that. That's what I try to do now. No winning of the argument. There's no winner. There is no winner to an argument. Both people leave upset or you feel like you won and the other person's so hurt that they shy away from you the next time. Neither way is a good thing to go about it. Number five for me is this, is that peer pressure from work, peer pressure from charity-based events, peer pressure from friends, from family, from a sporting events, any of those things to stay out late. Now, I know this might seem like, oh, well, that's such a trivial thing to worry about, but it had a trickle-down effect. And that's why I wanted to mention this last for you. There are things in your life that you're not pointing to that have a trickle-down effect that drain you of energy and your vibration. For the longest time, it took me forever to get into a solid sleep regimen and sleep cycle. Now I can, I mean, I was a total insomniac. If you haven't heard my story before, it would take a minimum of two hours for me to fall asleep. Two to three hours was normal for me. Sometimes I just wouldn't fall asleep. I wouldn't go to bed. It took me quite a bit of time to reverse that. I talk about how to do it in the rain barrel effect. I talk about it hopefully pretty succinctly in there. And once I got it back, I would then say, okay, good. I feel good. And I would go out like a Friday night with my friends and feel great. And then I would sleep in later. And then I would go out Saturday night. By Sunday, I couldn't fall asleep, couldn't get to bed by 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, whatever it might have been. It would take me till one o'clock, two o'clock or so in the morning to fall asleep, maybe even longer. And then the next day, I would be more tired. I would be less productive. I wouldn't want to exercise because I was exhausted because I still had to wake up for work. So here's the thing. I was more irritable. I had less energy. And I wasn't living the life that I wanted to. But I was going out and I was doing all these things And I was having so much fun. I mean, I love hanging out with my friends and I love going out late. I love going to sporting events. And I even like going to like charity events and things like that. I like all of those things, but I couldn't do it. And I couldn't do it because it threw off my circadian rhythm. It threw off my very sensitive body because I have a very sensitive body, very sensitive mind. 
And I've learned that. Here's the thing. Now I've been doing it for so long, I can go out with my friends. I can go out to a wedding. I can go out to a sporting event, get a little less sleep that night, but I always make sure to get up within maximum 30 minutes to 60 minutes of when I typically wake up. That allows me then, if I'm even a little bit more tired that day, fine. I'm a little more tired that day, but I go to bed then at the same exact time. So it took me a while. And that's what I'm saying to you. Any of these negative things that you might have to give up for a little while that are draining you, that are drawing you away from your true calling, from who you want to be as a person, you can eventually get them back at a smaller degree, but get them back, right? Because if you are going out two, three nights a week with friends and alcohol is involved all three of those nights, you're definitely, you're definitely going to be depleting your body of its energy, of its vital vibration. That's just a truth. I mean, because you are asking your liver, you're asking your body to constantly work at a higher level of detoxification. So I just wanted to share with you, those are my five. You'll have your own five and they're all look very, very different. Yours could be dealing with family. It could be, and again, I have my own things that I have to deal with my own family as well. I just gave you five. Remember, I had a lot of things to work on in life. I had a tremendous amount, a tremendous amount of things I really did in my 20s. And my 20s was a very stressful, it was a very painful time in my life. And I was literally, you know, the the story of basically burning in the fire, becoming ashes and rising again. Like that's how it felt a lot of the times. I literally felt like I was burning, into, turning into ashes. And that's because I was I was trying to break, using all the cliches, I was trying to literally break free of all of those molds. And that can be a painful process. But I'm telling you, even though it can sometimes be painful, and although it will never be easy in the beginning, it's always worth it. It really is. And that's why I try to just get you to take that next step forward, because I know if you take that next step forward, bigger and better things can occur in your life. So what I want you to do today is just try to think of five things, five things that are negative right now that feel like they're weighing you down in life. And is there any way to begin to cut those away, to move those away? It might take some time. It took time for me to do all the five that I just listed for you. But is there a way you can begin to push those away? Not add more to your life right now. The more will always come when you make the space for it. But is there a way to begin to eliminate some of those things in your life? Because when you do, you will automatically feel the energy, the vibration, that zest and vitality for life start to come back. Thank you so much for tuning in today's Mindset and Motivation Monday. Truly appreciate you. Thank you so much. Take care. Did you know that the body really only becomes sick or unbalanced in only two ways? Over time, you become deficient in vital nutrients and you also accumulate toxins internally and from the environment. As those nutrients diminish and you increase your total toxic load, your body then begins to show the first signs of dis-ease. It's actually quite predictable and the good news is that if we know how you began to fill up that proverbial rain barrel, We also know how to empty it to begin the healing process. I was fortunate enough to learn this ancient healing process from my mentor after suffering from debilitating diseases for close to a decade. It was only when I began to implement these techniques did I finally overcome my illnesses and go on to live a life of energy and vitality that I now enjoy. I'd like to share with you now what I discovered after traveling all over the world and how to combine the best of ancient healing wisdom with state-of-the-art science. Allow me to teach you exactly how I've been able to help over a quarter of a million people to empty their rain barrel and begin to transform their body and lives into what they've always hoped they could be. To get your copy of the international bestseller, The Rain Barrel Effect, simply go to stephencabral.com forward slash rain barrel.